start with the Lexus here to get a bit of a benchmark. So as you can hear, the big story here is engines. Both cars are packing five liters of naturally aspirated V8 Thunder. Now the 5 liter V8 in this Lexus RCF makes more power than the Mustang by about 12 horsepower. It makes 472 horsepower. However, where it falls short is the torque figure. At 395, it's really coming in below the Mustang. And if we're gonna extrapolate this comparison, and I think it bears mentioning, this is still underpowered as compared to competitors like the C63S with its twin turbo V8 making 503 horsepower. So in general, it's a nice, nice powertrain, but it is lacking a little bit in terms of punch from the lack of torque. And yeah, you do, you do notice it. Now wrangling all this power is a normal eight speed automatic torque vectoring gearbox. And to be honest, it's okay. This is something that's very Lexus. I think they kind of nerf the transmission a little bit because it is slow on downshift, especially when you're in throttle. Um, but other than that, the upshifts are crisp. The sound that you get is incredible. And I absolutely love that part of this car. All right, we're gonna come to a corner and we're gonna downshift in manual mode. Downshifts are okay on braking. On throttle, they're a little bit slow. But then, you get right back on the power and the power is sent through a torque vectoring differential out the back, managing the way that your power gets down to the ground. It goes through Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, which are very sticky and very nice. However, it's still very easy mid-corner, if you apply power too quick, to, to really spin the back end out. And that is a problem with, I don't want to be stereotypical, but a lot of Mustang memes come from the fact that people aren't expecting that level of power to come out. So having a torque vectoring differential here with the live readout in your gauge cluster telling you where your power is going into which wheel is super helpful. That with the tires makes it a bit more of a refined driving experience. Another thing that differentiates this RCF is the fact that it has a launch control and it's not just slam your foot on the brake, put your foot on the gas, rev to about 3000, let off the brake and then you go. No, you have a refined and well sophisticated, you still have to apply that process, but you have a more sophisticated process to launch and you will get to 60 in just under four seconds, which is pretty impressive. All right, so those are the headline figures. And they're not bad. They're not quite on par with the German competitors, but for this comparison, muscle to muscle, I think we're pretty close to each other. However, if I'm totally honest, you really have to extrapolate beyond the numbers to understand what makes this car special. Down the gearbox. Power out, even. Up shift bangs up shifts really well. So what I want to talk about is character and that's something that journalists kind of get laughed at a little bit for because they're always talking about uh, the emotion and the connection and the feel that you get with a car. But it is very true and it's more true in something like this than in something like the competitors to this RCF like the BMW M4 or the C63. You get more character out of a car like this and the Mustang than you get out of those because those are mostly just numbers cars, specifically the BMW. But what you get here is just a honey of an engine. The sound that comes off this thing is incredible. I mean, just listen to this thing. And the gearbox is pretty good. when you're shifting in manual mode. The downshifts are not bad, you just can't be on the throttle when you do it. And then the lateral forces, 
the dynamics of holding onto this car. It's just, it, there's so much more of an experience than just a zero to 60. There's so much more of an experience than just a quarter mile drag time. If this is not a numbers car. If you're looking for that, go to the BMW lot. What you're getting here is more qualitative than quantitative. Because yes, this car is flawed. It is over 400 pounds heavier than the M4. It's not a true through and through sports car. It is more of a muscle car. It's heavy, it's got a big V8, it revs out, it sounds good. But there's so much to love about that. And I think the Mustang embodies a lot of those characteristics as well. So let's get behind the wheel of that and see how it compares. Let me just begin by saying that I love this Mustang. I've spent a lot of time in it since they did the refresh in 2018, and it continues to impress me every time I get behind the wheel. Now, of course, we're gonna start in the same place. We're gonna start with that honey of an engine, the five liter naturally aspirated V8 up there. It's dubbed the Coyote motor from Ford, and if you want the flat plane crank version, you get yourself a GT350, but this 5.0 is just just so much fun. So the power out of this mill comes in at 460 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque. So it is down on power from the RCF about 12 horsepower. However, it's up on the RCF in terms of torque by about 25 pound-feet. So it's definitely not a slouch. Now the only issue that I have with this car that I'm driving today is I have the 10-speed automatic Ford-built transmission. In the past, I've had the six-speed three-pedal manual, and it is so much fun. I mean, this is a muscle car, but it's evolved to the point of sports car, and that kind of, that manual transmission is always the enthusiast's choice, but it really kind of harkens back to that more old-school, vintage muscle feel. Now that isn't to say that this 10 speed is bad by any means. The shifts are still pretty quick and you actually have more gear so your gears can be shorter so it actually feels like you're up in the power band a little bit more. You have a little bit more control of your gearing and where you're having your power. Now from there, obviously your power goes to your rear wheels, but it goes through a mechanical limited slip differential. This is a huge departure from the, the historic Mustang drivetrain. You have so much more control with your torque and your the way that your, your Mustang is putting down that power with this limited slip. You have much more traction. It's not just a burnout machine. This thing has evolved. All right, so let's recap real quick. We have the same engine, five liters of naturally aspirated V8 glory. We've got similar automatic transmissions. We have both sending power to the rear using a clever differential, and they both have zero to 60 times in about 3.8 to 3.9 seconds. So they're pretty identical as far as specs so far, which is why I get so upset when people just look at cars for the numbers. There's so much more going on here, and this is what I mean. This Mustang is so dominated by the engine, just the big brutishness and the exhaust and the, just the sound that comes off this thing dominates your experience. But you can option Ford's PP2 or Performance Pack 2, which is the second of the performance upgrades, and that gives you a bunch of stuff that evens the car out. Most notably so are the Magna Rheological dampers, which totally transform the way that this car handles and feels on the road, and it is a must if you are a serious driver or you want to take this car on track. However, the fact remains that this is still a big, brutish, heavy, derived from a muscle car type vehicle, so it's definitely not going to be a through and through sports car, and you just have to accept that. However, it's made such great strides in the last five, 10 years, in this last generation, even from the generation that came out in 2015 to 2018, the difference there is, is, is massive, so you kind of forgive it a little bit. <laughs> And then you consider the price that Ford is able to deliver this thing to customers. At around 35 grand to start, it's so much car for the money. And that's where you really have to respect the fact that Ford has done something incredible by building this car for that dollar figure. And with that, let's get into final thoughts and wrap that out. 
All right, so when I got this Lexus RCF dropped off to me this week, I didn't know it was coming until the day it was delivered. So I didn't have a lot of time to plan for this video. So I was panicking, going through my head, oh my God, what am I gonna compare it to? Obviously, competitors like the C63S came to mind, the BMW M4, the Audi RS5, and that video is coming, so make sure that you subscribe, because in two weeks, you're gonna be able to watch that. But then I texted one of my friends, and I was like, hey, I've got this five liter naturally aspirated V8 Japanese muscle car coming in, and he was like, why don't you do the Mustang? And I thought about it and I kind of laughed it off. And then all of a sudden I start thinking about it more and I'm like, you know, this kind of makes sense. You've got these two big, heavy sports coupes, five liters, naturally aspirated of eight cylinder glory, four seats in the cabin, rear wheel drive and character that echoes throughout time. Seems to make sense to me. So these cars have been very similar up until this point and that's money. This Mustang starts at around $35,000, which is, kind of unsafely cheap to be completely honest. That's just not enough money. There's too much power for a lot of people to handle. However, for serious drivers that are looking to get the most out of this car, you're gonna wanna upgrade to PP2, the Performance Pack 2. That package in and of itself is $6,500. Now, there's additional equipment that is required when you opt for that package. And quickly, you'll find yourself at over $45,000. It's an extra 10 grand in options, but it handsomely pays off in the form of this Mustang. You get magno rheological dampers, a whole bunch of stuff to really suit this car and kind of make it more than just an engine. And with that being said, we have to talk about this Lexus. And the RCF is a much more complete car out of the box. I don't think you really need the track package on this thing. Yeah, you get carbon fiber bits here and there, but there's simply too much weight for a couple carbon fiber things here and there to shave off enough to make it a true and thorough sports car. So I would skip it, which means that you can get closer to that $65,000 entry price. However, you won't get that close. You're gonna probably be between 70 and 75,000, which makes it double the starting price of this Mustang. And yes, the RCF is a more complete car and you get a lot more interior and there's more sophistication and rarity that comes along with it, but it's not double the car for double the price. So ultimately it was an awesome day with these two cars. The Mustang continues to impress me time and time again. And this Lexus just oozes character from every weird body panel here. Obviously the Lexus is the one you want, but the Mustang is the one you can afford and based on what I found today, that's all right. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you Russ Darrow Mazda of Greenfield, Wisconsin for providing the Mustang for this video today. If you like what you saw, go ahead and hit that thumbs up and subscribe because in two weeks this RCF is going against the heavy hitters like the AMGs and the BMW M cars, so don't miss it.